Texas Myler. But for the RFL segment, welcome to The Claw. Trying out new things. Still don't know if that works, but we'll find out. We'll see if it gets rolled. But as you can see, it is the start of a new season, ladies, or, uh, well, gentlemen. Um, we are midway, or we're starting the slug draft now. We are waiting on the Jets to select his next pick. Obviously, with the slug draft, we will not be starting the actual draft until Friday. So, first and foremost, if you don't already, set your boards. Please, set your boards, okay? Because, you know, don't hold up the league. Set your boards. If you're, if you're around, get it done. If not, set the board, please. Please! But other than that, it's going to be an exciting new season. A lot of things happened, and it should be very exciting to see what comes next. Um, the biggest thing is a lot of people lost uh, some, regret, had a lot of regressing in their abilities. A lot of people. So, a lot of users are kind of upset about that, but hey, that's Madden. Deal with it. Okay? I'm going to take these off. Light just reflecting. It's not working. But, to start off, we will start off with our Super Bowl champions. So, we had a matchup between the Giants and the Chargers, and it was a very interesting, interesting game. But the Giants came out on top, 24-7. to Congratulations, Giants. It's bittersweet because, you know, you were in the same division, but you know what? You earned it. You got it. Congratulations. Now let's see if you can go for a repeat. And the Super Bowl MVP, which, I, as far as I know, it's very unique, is a cornerback, Chris Westry. Super Bowl MVP. Congratulations, sir. Don't know very many corners that have won the MVP in the Super Bowl. So congratulations. Congratulations to the Giants on a 24-7 victory over the Chargers. Uh, with our yearly awards, Seahawks, Joe Mixon was our MVP. Congratulations. Coach of the year was the Bills, Leroy Garcia. And then Offensive Player of the Year, which usually is a little bit different. But Joe Mixon again, congratulations. Defensive Player of the Year for the Eagles. Oh, I just realized my fan is on. Hang on one second. That way you're not hearing my fan just pick up on the mic and just <laughs> not worth it. Definitely not worth it. But like I was saying, Defensive Player of the Year, Kavon Wallace for the Philadelphia Eagles. Congratulations. Rookie of the Year, another Eagle, T. Booker. And Defensive Rookie of the Year for the 49ers. Oh, I, don't, I hope I don't botch this. Don Kanoji. If I mispronounced it, sir, I am very sorry. <laughs> I am very bad with that. But congratulations to all our yearly award winners. Congratulations to our Super Bowl winner. Should be exciting. We'll have some great matchups this year as well. All right, so next up. So obviously you cannot see all the free agents, the things going on, things that happened. Oh, and look at that. The, new, the Jets have selected their pick, Jonathan Pollock, out of Shepard University, linebacker. 80 overall what the heck all right i bet this guy better have some depth but um yeah so free oh oh we are moving alex capers out of clemson tight end 75 overall congratulations panthers so with that something keeps going on i keep losing my train of thought next in our segment after a very long season, we have lost a few users to retirement. I am very sad to announce this one. Zach Martin, longtime Cowboy offensive lineman. He will be missed. Zach Martin has retired. Please come back. We need you. Please come back. Bobby Wagner has retired. Longtime linebacker in the league. And another big player that had retired this year after moving on from the Rams, Aaron Donald. He has retired one season with the Bengals, and he called it quits. Don't know what happened there, but hey, you know what? He's enjoying his money now. So have a good one, sir. Also other, good name, or other big names, Jack Doyle, Harrison Smith, Cam Newton, and longtime kicker, probably... 
one of the best kickers, especially in fantasy football, Matt Prater. Have a good one, sir. You uh, you clutched a lot of kicking points there. Okay. So those are our big retirements. There were a few others, but I'm not going to go down that log list because then you might get kind of bored if you not are if you are not already. But after that, free agency took place, and we had a lot of movement there as well. A lot of big names moved, and some are very top heavy. So first and foremost, we have Austin Eckler, who is now moved on from the. Chargers and is now on the Arizona Cardinals. So the Cardinals and I have people broadcasting. The Cardinals are looking to make another Super Bowl appearance. So hopefully Austin Eckler can be a big difference maker in there and see what he does. And fullback Tim Riggins, which was weird, found himself in free agency. I don't know what was going on there. I mean, maybe just a out i've heard you know rumors that the coach was just super frustrated you know just started going all haywire and you know tim riggins was like hey i'm gonna back out for a, real, a little bit you know test the market test the waters but the jags management team was like hey man we need you back we need you back so tim riggins back with the jags and actually another big player that the jags signed that i'm not a big fan of Longtime Cowboy, Lael Collins, has found himself on the Jacksonville Jaguars alongside Tyron Smith. It makes you wonder what the Jags are trying to do there. It's like as if they have a secret obsession with the Cowboys. I don't know. But who knows? But congratulations to Collins. He will be missed in Dallas. Hopefully he has a successful career and the Jags are able to do something with him on the other side of the offensive line. Now another team that made some Big moves in free agency on the offensive side of the ball. Actually, a team that made big moves in general on the offensive side, the Texans. The Texans went out crazy and signed Keenan Allen and Odell Beckham. Two big name wide receivers. They lost a few wide receivers and now two well known veteran wide receivers, Odell Beckham. And Keenan Allen are coming in. And as a big movement, or as a big mover, actually, George Kittle found his found his way to the Texans as well in a trade with the uh I believe the Bears. The Bears had them. And now George Kittle is now on the Texans. So the Texans are loading up. They're looking for a Super Bowl appearance. They've been in the playoffs many seasons already, so they're trying to find that extra little push. To get themselves in the big game. Good luck to you Texans. Hopefully it pays off. Because obviously you're paying a lot of bucks there. Yeah. You know, yep. Another uh, interesting story. Khalil Mack. Left the Bears. Got traded. And now finds his way back. To the Chicago Bears. He came home. Hoping to do something. Maybe he's looking to retire soon. And just wants to be back in Chicago. Where he first started. Or not where he first started off. But finds himself back there. To finish up the rest of his career. So good luck to you sir. Hopefully you have a good one. And a big mover from the Chargers. Hunter Henry has signed with the Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati's already got a good amount of offensive skill there. So let's see with Hunter Henry. If that can be an addition to get them back into the playoffs. And be very competitive in a very tough division. The AFC North with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, Ravens and uh, the Brown. Well, uh, oh, no offense, Browns, but uh, <laughs> but with the Ravens and the Steelers, it's a very tough division. And if Cincinnati hopes to be competitive with them, they need to find ways to make moves, get some good players, and you know, secure the ball on offense. So, good luck to you. Hopefully, it pays off. We'll see. And so, on to a little bit of a Still transitioning of a lot of movement, and the Bears have selected the next pick, Jonathan Carmen out of Boston College, right guard. Good pick, sir. Ding, ding, ding. But a big move. Cortland Sutton has left the 49ers to the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys are looking to make some moves on offense and have struggled to find ways to attack 
the defense in the air in the past. So hopefully with the acquisition of Cortland Sutton can help him out. Had a little bit of a take a little bit of a pressure off of C.D. Lamb there. So we'll see how that works out come this season. And no, I uh, to the three of you, uh, I, I, I I do not want to buy followers. Sorry, no. And a big move that just happened probably mm, within an hour ago. Goodness gracious, you people. No. Uh, <laughs> Jalen Ramsey has left the Rams and is now on the Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings made a huge move, traded Kendall Fuller and Carl Lawson and a first-round pick for Jalen Ramsey. That is a huge move, and hopefully that pays off. Because that contract is deep. But Jalen Ramsey is a great player. You cannot deny that. So Minnesota, hopefully that pays off for you. All right. And one that just happened because of this draft that literally has me going crazy. It's just like, what is going on with, with this pick is, or just with this trade is the Los Angeles Rams and the football team. So for the people that don't know, Washington football team had the number four pick. The Rams were, I think, 19 and 22 with first round picks. And, you know, Rams over here just making it rain for the football team. Three first round picks for football team for that number four pick. I don't know. It, it, you know what? He obviously wanted someone. Very important to his team. Hopefully it works out because that is a lot of first round picks and football team is just sitting pretty right now like, oh yes, because I would be too. So, you know, Rams make it pay off. Football team, congratulations. Get some great players with that. You have an opportunity to make some moves and be competitive in the NFC East. So, and after that, let me see. Yeah, so... Just about wrapped up. Oh, and the Packers have selected Tracy Duke out of FAU. Halfback. Packers needed a halfback. So, good luck with that pick. All right, now to our final little thing. I'm going to make early predictions. Just a Super Bowl prediction of the matchup and a t two teams that are going to make it this year that didn't make the playoffs last year. So... Two teams that I think, one AFC, one NFC, that I think will make the playoffs this year. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I think if they play their games, or actually if the CPU finds a way to help them out, the Patriots sneak in. Who knows? Not sure. But we'll see. But I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers has a real shot at making the playoffs. They have been right on that border for seasons now. I They made it the playoffs i believe one season or a couple seasons ago and i think they find their way back into it this year they are super close they've made a lot of moves on offense defense and they are just right there and i think this is the season where they break through a little bit they get to the playoffs i don't know if it's enough to make a super bowl appearance but i think they find their way to get into the playoffs now the patriots patriots has a very good cpu team and if you if he plays his games We'll see, but CPU, or not CPU, but the Patriots has had some good, good games in the past, win some good games here and there. If he can do that, that's true. Ravens and 49ers did miss, but actually, I already expect y'all to make it back, so that's why I was like, mm, I won't put that one. I think, I think the Ravens and the 49ers kind of just had a little bit of an off year, which happens. I think they find their way back into the playoffs real quick and easy. Uh, just because those are two very competitive teams. But I wanted to touch on two teams that really don't really get in the playoffs much. But I do expect the Ravens and the 49ers back in the playoffs pretty easily. I think it was just a bit of a weird year. This season and this pat this season five of Madden was a very unique one in a way. So we'll see if the Ravens and 49ers are able to get back on track and get back to the playoffs. But I, I expect that to happen already. So that's why I chose these two teams, just because I think they're teams we haven't really seen in the playoffs a lot. And I think it's their time to really shine now and get back in or get into that playoff race. 
I don't think it's enough to make a Super Bowl appearance, but hey, making playoffs is still a great accomplishment. I, I speak as a person that just makes playoffs and then gets one and done. But hey, you made playoffs, right? <laughs> so, but the Cowboys do want to get further too. And so, to finish up, I'm going to choose my Super Bowl prediction. Kind of my assumption of what's going to happen. And I think it's one that has been talked about for quite some time now. Because of a lot of, uh, there has been a lot of smack talk, a lot of drama. I don't, not like crazy drama, but just, you know, it's, it's gotten heated sometimes. And I think a lot of people want to see this matchup. And actually, I wonder, because I think the Cowboys do play them this year but actually let me let me say let me say it first uh so i i predict the los An or the chargers and the eagles in the super bowl i think that will be the super bowl matchup of this year one that has been long awaited and one that's been talked about quite often and i didn't really see it happening this past season and obviously it didn't but i could see that happening this season in my opinion i think eagles uh had a tough loss and is looking to get back in the super bowl and really just reclaim his title after his previous victory and chargers i think chargers wants blood he wants he wants to redeem himself after honestly a tough loss in the super bowl versus the giants so i think he will face another nfc east team maybe but i think it's gonna be the eagles and i think it'll be a good game and if i had to choose a winner of that game right away i'm going to say the eagles just because i think the eagles is able to apply a lot of pressure on defense and even though the chargers do find a way to score a lot especially with those wide receivers like donald biden Dwayne graham i think the eagles is able to put some pressure on the quarterback and even just be very, uh, what's the word? Well, uh, just be very, put a lot of pressure on those receivers to make the make the catches and, you know, makes a lot of user mistakes, I think. And I think that's where the Chargers will make some errors. And that Eagles secondary has been ruthless in the past. So I choose Eagles Chargers will be the Super Bowl matchup of this year. Buccaneers Patriots, hey, find a way to get into the playoffs. By playing your games, hopefully not letting the CPU do it. But I predict you guys make the playoffs this year. Best of luck to you guys in your playoff aspirations. Oh, actually, you know what? Let me check. Oh, that's what I was going to check. Let's see. The Eagles and the Chargers might actually play. Oh, yeah, so they play week two. So that'll be a game we see very early on. And we might possibly see, or at least that I predict, will be in the Super Bowl. But... We'll see how that goes. And with so that is about it, guys. I just kind of wanted to touch on things, kind of bring you a little off-season special, bring more of a uh, kind of a broadcast sort of thing to you. I know we've had the podcast in the past, um, but we haven't really had one that we've had articles of like free agency and awards and stuff like that. But I think sometimes a broadcast is a little bit better like this or just something to talk about. Get you guys thinking about it. Have some fun with it. Get you guys pumped for the rest of this draft. And a good season ahead. So it's going to be very exciting. I will be, I will do my best to get a week-by-week -week matchup, prediction, everything. But sometimes, you know, life does get, get in and I'm not able to. So I will do my best on that. But yeah, should be a very exciting season, everyone. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching. Hope you guys, you know, feel free to chat disagree agree with me talk about it in rfl chat and yeah let's just see what this year has for us so all right guys so i'm going to sign off here on the texas miler welcome it's going to be ex an exciting new season and we'll see how it unfolds so until next time guys stay safe take care of yourselves i'll be back on in a bit for streaming on uh, battlefront 2 for the evening so feel free to tune in again but other than that, the claw segment is ending. But a new season begins. Well, I mean, it's not the claw segment's not ending, but um just ending tonight. But yeah. Okay. So ruin that. But yeah, that's how it goes. Alright, so 
Stay safe, guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next stream. Take care of yourselves. Texas Myler, signing off.